operator's manual, the timing on this engine is not adjustable. It's all controlled by the computer, and it's controlled by the sensors, which is the cam synchronizer. Now this engine, the cam synchronizer is mounted back here behind the head against the firewall. It's very difficult to get to. Now the timing on this vehicle is electronically controlled. It does not have a distributor. Now in the old distributors, you know you would stick this down it would go into the oil pump and as it rotates then up the top your rotor bug would turn around. Well since we don't have a distributor we have a cam synchronizer it's very much the same as this turns it sticks down the same hole goes under the oil pump drive but on the top instead of a rotor you can see as this turns the wheel inside there that syncs up with the cam position sensor is the only thing that's moving so this is controlling the timing as you know the crankshaft controls the pistons and the camshaft controls the valves and must be timed with the pistons the crankshaft has a missing tooth on the pulse ring that is picked up by the crank sensor that reports to the computer and is used for referencing number one and for RPM. Now the camshaft has teeth on it. But as you can see, there's no missing teeth, nothing to index. The synchronizer has teeth on the end of it as well. And as you can see, there are no missing teeth on it either, nothing to index. The camshaft is down inside the block. Then you insert the synchronizer and the teeth just simply mesh up. They line up exactly and it's a direct correlation. Every time the camshaft rotates, so does the synchronizer. So the cam synchronizer synchronizes the movement of this wheel and reports that to the cam position sensor to the computer so it can adjust timing. So when you stab it in there, it has to be just at the right place, and it has to be right on. There's no adjustment. You cannot rotate. Here is the most common problem we see with these. If you look at it real close, you can see some movement in it. You can see it moving. That's because of the play in the shaft. Now first off, that movement is not good. It could very easily distort the signal. And these things have a problem with that and squealing when that bearing in there goes bad. By comparison, here's a new one. And you can see when I move this one, there's no movement at all. I can't make it move at all, but it does rotate. You need to replace the cam synchronizer because it's bad. Now keep in mind, that's not the position sensor. The position sensor is up here on top, and it's going to tell us the position as it rotates. So here's what you need to do if you need to stab a synchronizer. If you look at the service manual, it is saying that we need to stab this so that it ends up at 15 degrees. Now the service manual states that the timing is not adjustable. So what's all this reference to 15 degrees about? Now back in the days when we used a lot of distributors, this timing spec was important because it was adjustable. We would stab the distributor so that the rotor was pointing at the number one terminal on the distributor cap. And then if we weren't close, we could actually rotate the distributor until we were right at the spec. So you needed timing marks. But now that the engines are electronically controlled, there's no need for timing marks. Now I'm going to tell you something that you won't read in the service manual unless you read closely in between the lines and then you'll see it. Here it is. As long as your engine has number one at top dead center, it really doesn't matter where you stab this cam synchronizer. The reference to 15 degrees is simply so that the position sensor which is on top will have the wire harness pointing in the right direction so that it won't get in the bind or put any stress under it. Now let me explain. The crankshaft and the camshafts are all mechanically timed to 10 degrees beyond top dead center. They're held in place with a timing chain. So as long as the timing chain is intact, the relationship between the cams and the cranks will never change. It really doesn't matter which one is on because the synchronizer that has the sensor in it will create a sine wave 
that is the same for every revolution. It's just repetitive and it doesn't matter which stroke it's on. The crankshaft and camshaft are all still held in place with the timing chain. As long as we're at top dead center on number one, when we stab this synchronizer, as long as we're using the alignment tool, which keeps the interrupter in the correct position when we stab it, our 15 degrees simply pertains to the position of the sensor on top. So now with the synchronizer stabbed and the engines at top dead center, every time that crankshaft rotates, so is the cam synchronizer. And it's going to interrupt the signal and make a sine wave that is simply repetitive over and over again. So now what are we talking about the 15 degrees? I want you to draw an imaginary line right down the center of this engine, not at the center of the engine, but the center of this hole that is mounted on the top of the engine. So we want to find our center line, and notice that there's an arrow pointing at the 15 degree mark. On top of the synchronizer is also an arrow. You want that pointing at the 15 degree mark. So the critical point is that the engine be at number one top dead center and then you stab the synchronizer as long as the tool is in place and pointing around 15 degrees it doesn't matter where you stab it. The 15 degrees is simply so that when you take the tool off and put your position sensor on the connector for the position sensor will be aimed at the right place so that when you plug it in there will be no stress on the harness or the wires. Now the camshaft synchronizer doesn't have a distributor cap instead it has a cam position sensor and then the top, it's got a magnet, and then as this passes past that magnet, it interrupts the signal and creates the sine wave. So just like a distributor would rotate and you want the rotor pointing at number one, once it's all set all the way down in there, you want this at number one when it's all set down in there. So how do we do that? Well, when you buy a cam synchronizer, nowadays, most of them come with a synchronization tool and if you look at it it's got a notch for the interrupter and it will only go on here one way if this is turned it won't go in there but when I rotate this around this locks it in place this tool then locks it in place so that the interrupter is pointing right at the exact same position now here's a sideline Various cam position synchronizers have various reluctors on there and they all have a different size. So you can buy a kit. If you're buying a synchronizer, it'll probably come with this tool. But if you're reusing one and you don't have the tool, you can buy a kit. They're plastic, but they all have a different size reluctor inside. And each one has a little different shape so that it will match the top of your cam synchronizer. So if you read between the lines, the service manual does not tell us where to stab the synchronizer exactly because it really doesn't matter. What does matter is that the engine be at top dead center and you use the alignment tool on the synchronizer.